Welcome to the Bod Pod, the podcast where everybody is welcome. I'm your host, Rachel K. Grimm, and each week we welcome old and new friends to talk all things body image, self love, and confidence. This is the Bod Pod. Let's hear it for today's sponsor, Shaperman. They have the best everyday confidence-boosting supportive wear. From smoothing camis to wire-free bras, they're comfortable, supportive for every body and every style. They're on sale now for up to 70% off, and for BodPod listeners, use code BODPOD for an extra 10% off. Get your confidence boost at shaperman.com. Hey, BodPod squad. I'm Rachel K. Graham, the confidence coach behind Ditch the Click and your BodPod host every week typically from my cute Brooklyn apartment, but today from somewhere a little different. I'm bringing you confidence-boosting conversations with some of your favorites in the space. And today I have not one guest, but two. I have Stella Williams, who is a content creator and model. And I also have Leslie, who has been on the podcast before. She is with us here on Team BodCon, and she is also a creator in the online space. And I'm so thrilled to have this conversation with them. And uh, I'll be honest, it was a bit of a quick turnaround for us putting this together, but we know that it is meant to be because, drum roll please, Stella, we need to hear your story. (laughs) Hey, well, when you said my name, it was so hard not to do a peace sign. I'm really working on that in 2023. (laughs) Um, Yeah, I literally just walked back into my hotel in London um, from dinner. And there was a couple next to me and I was talking to them the whole night. And in the middle of the conversation, I was like, okay, well, what are your names? She's like, I'm Lynn. He's like, I'm Sean. And I was like, I'm Stella. She's like, I thought you said your name was Trisha. And I was like, no. And she's like, are you sure? I'm like, yeah. I'm like, that's weird. I was like, I have a friend, Trisha, but no. And then 20, 30 minutes later, here we are. And the producer of this pod is Trisha. So it's yeah. just, oh, great. <laughs> sorry. So it's just so connected. I love it. <laughs> yes. I am so here for like good signs and good energy and like things just making me feel like I'm in the right place and where I'm supposed to be. And when you said yeah. that, I got chills. I was like, she's a medium. I forgot to mention that. So she was a medium. So I was like, oh, well, maybe I need to reach out to him. Like, I don't know. Like, so yeah, we are meant to be here today having this conversation. And what I think is really neat too is you two have actually met before. So Leslie, maybe you can give us a little like BTS on YouTube oh. in the past. How embarrassing. It's such an embarrassing story for me. I don't but think you know so. what? I think it was embarrassing because personally, I bogarted her. So basically, we both were at the Good American uh I think it was a callback for the casting call. It wasn't just the open casting call. I knew when Stella was gonna be there because I saw her previously stated, like, oh, this is my callback time. So I knew that I was gonna be there earlier. So I didn't know if we were gonna meet. But basically, I was leaving the interview space because they did have people like do interviews. And right when I'm leaving, Stella's walking in and there's like a ramp. So the, it's so funny because the interviews were public, like, and you can see the people walking back and forth to the bathroom. And I literally am walking down the ramp and I stop. And I turn around because I know she's going to the bathroom. I was not kidding. I went to the bathroom and I, you know, I waited for her to get there. I was like, I know this is really awkward and you just got here, but I just wanted to introduce myself because I'm so excited to meet you because I know what you've done for this space. And I feel like it's important to give people props when due, right? Like I know for a fact that I might not be a YouTuber or even starting that journey if there wasn't someone else in this space already doing it. And it gave me the confidence to be that person. So it was like, ah! And I don't, she handled it well. I would like to add the way, Leslie, you were carrying yourself. I thought you ran that whole event. I thought you were like, oh, and I was like, okay, where are we going? Like, I didn't know what was happening. And then, and then I was like, oh, okay. But you, the way you were just like, and then you're like, oh my gosh, turn around. Like I got it. I was like, okay. Like, what are, okay. <laughs> oh yeah. Because there was something, I was like trying to help you with your hair. Cause your hair got stuck. Yeah, I was like, okay, I was okay, like, yeah. turn around, let me take care of it. But you know what? You're not the only person who said that because they were like, um, maybe we should have you be like our hype girl because I was just hyping up everybody. And some of the people who were judges, I didn't know that they were models. And I was like, oh my God, girl, you're so pretty. So I was like complimenting people. I'm just like that. But like, I knew that when I saw you, I'm like, I'm running up to her. I don't care what anybody has to say about it. But I was talking about it the whole time. I'm like, I know Stella's going to be here, right? Just in case you're wondering. Because <laughs> every, because uh, other plus size people know, like, you know, in the community, they, they know who Stella is. So I was like, hopefully I get to meet her. So it was like a conversation that we were having while waiting. And then someone was like, did you see Stella? 
like yeah. to me my followers all the time they're like you know who we know like you we know who you are right and like I still that just that is something that just hasn't clicked yet I get that all <laughs> like I'm like like, like like someone will come up to me and be like yeah I'm still and they're like I know I'm like I don't know it's just <laughs> I see you <laughs> sometimes like when you're in the space and you are the person that people know of they don't realize how much of an impact that they have on their community because you're thinking I'm just living my life and I'm just being a YouTuber. I feel like there's a lot of times where people want someone who's in this space and there's people like me who are like, oh my gosh, I met Stella. I'm so excited. But then there are people who decide to tear you down rather than lift you up. Like if they don't hundred percent agree with whatever you're doing in your space. So how do you handle like, cause you get a lot of backlash, you know, because of just you being yourself. We're getting right into it. We're getting right into it. No, we are because because it's important for me to know how you handle that because there's people like me who understand what you're trying to do and then there's people who don't understand what it takes to be in your space. So I would love to like hear your experience and how you felt about that. Ooh, okay. So I would like to also say yesterday was the first day in the airport. Usually um, I live in Baltimore. So a lot of times I run into people. My, most of my following is in the UK, coincidentally but also in New York, Baltimore, whole East coast. And so I run into people quite a lot and it's always weird. It's always new. And you know, it's always great meeting people. And yesterday in the airport was like the first time I've met someone after my recent controversy. And it was just like, she came up and she laughed and like, I didn't know if she was coming up to me or not. Cause my back and I turned, she's like, oh. she's like, Oh no, I'm not laughing at you. She's like, I just like literally just watched your video and blah, blah. But usually when I have these interactions, it's like, well, I like ask people what their name is, you know, get to know them. And um, this conversation was different. And but then she sat like two chairs away from me and then we just didn't interact. So this is the first time ever there was no like follow up conversation. So in my head, I'm starting to get insecure. Like, oh, my gosh, like, is she an op? Like, does she not lie? Like, does she see it? Like, is she not with me? So it's just um, interesting. I had that was the first time in my life I've ever had that in real life. I think online it's a little different. I think a lot of times people say things online they would never say in real life. Yeah. And I feel most of my career, a lot of the backlash I get is usually like about my body. And so at this point to me, it's just like, so like wipe it off. I think maybe the first couple of times it happened, um, I was more insecure about it because I was living in Los Angeles in a time where it wasn't really okay to have like diverse body shapes. Mm -hmm. And it was different. I feel like if I were to have like moved to LA now and started my career now and gone through the same motions I didn't have the same things happen I don't feel I would be as insecure getting those comments just because of the landscape and how much it's changed yeah. but yeah I feel like especially recently I just I've known I've always told my friends this right I have a lot of friends now that are not influencers living on the east coast I'm like I just don't read comments they're like oh did you see what this person said or I can't believe these trolls mm. whatever I'm like it's just best to live authentically as yourself because yeah. I'm a creator who in the beginning I didn't know I could be myself. I thought I had to be the persona or I had to be an actor. I had to do all these other things, but like, I'm enough. <laughs> and it took yeah. me a long time to realize that. And so I've made a lot of mistakes. I've made a lot of bad decisions just throughout that, of course, are rightfully getting hate. And then the stuff that's not so much like the body shaming. And I just feel like I have to, for me to be here today and just smiling and being like, okay, like I have to own my stuff and I have to be like, yeah yeah, in 2018, I did that or, you know, whatever. And, or last week I did that too. So it's just about knowing that the people who know my spirit in my heart and who I am are there to like, kind of pick me up when I fall too. Like this isn't just yeah. a one-way street. And that's why I always stress the new creators to community. Cause yeah, you could influence people to buy stuff and do whatever, but if you're not connecting with your community, like you're not just helping someone else grow, like your community really, if you let it happen, they can help you grow too. And I just feel like that's a part that sometimes is overlooked. Absolutely. Yeah. That was a beautiful answer and a great way to get this started. Like so that makes good. me feel like we are going to dive deep. And from that, I, I want to talk a little bit about the flip side. So you said about the backlash, you know, that you'll get comments and often you don't read them. And that that was the first time in person that you felt a bit insecure right after like someone responded in the way that they did especially in person and so I want to talk about the other side though about um people so we'll talk about Leslie like women like Leslie or even myself who see you and we're like wow what an incredible example she's setting like she's making us feel like we can do 
X, Y, Z. You know, you even said about you two met at the Good American Casting. You had recently shared a post talking about how you um, had the callback, but your callback did not turn into you working with Good American, right? And in, in that video, you talked about how that is actually not, that's not to be seen as just a failure, but also as a stepping stone for like something even better that's next. And I think that you give a lot of people that um, ability to think about what is next for them, you know, seeing your body and seeing what you, what you represent. And so I'm curious about that flip side, like maybe stories that you've heard from other women or men who have seen you and been like, wow, what you share has changed my life for whatever reason. Because I feel like those... I always talk about, um, you know, us all having a little arsenal where, where we hold the things that remind us of what we're capable of on, uh, what we call on the bod pod, the bad, the sad B days, cause we all have sad B days. Um, like that arsenal that we look to, to be like, no, 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 I am a bad B. Like I, I can do it. Right. And I'm sure like you've had comments that could go into that arsenal and I, I want, I want to hear them. Well, first I want to shout out Taniki, hey girl. So I was boarding my flight from JFK to London and she just checked me and she's like, just tell it. Like, and she was so excited. So, you know, I had that one experience and then immediately the next flight, I got another experience. I was like, oh, we're back. But um, um, yes, we're back. <laughs> you know, I'm gonna be so for real right now because that's just what I do best. I still get insecure when people come up to me with the positive, like you changed my life because it feels like a lot of pressure. And what I ended up doing was falling into this perfectionism image of myself because you hear stories. And I mean, it's, I just want to be real. It's not just online. Like I do go through my DMS and I've been very public. Like I don't answer a lot of DMS because it's overwhelming. I feel like if I answer one, why is it, why am I, it feels unfair. It's so, but I'm like, I have to answer them all. So I try to respond within videos or, you know, whatever, but I feel the pressure and I love the stories, but oftentimes my anxiety as I hear them is I have to do more. I have to do better. I have to know that you could do this too. I have to know that it's accessible because oftentimes if people knew that, and then they listen to my responses, when I meet them, it's usually me telling them you could do it too, instead of saying, thank you. And so I think there's a little bit of an imposter syndrome there. Like, cause I don't know how I got here. Like Mm -hmm. how I'm modeling in Paris next week beyond me don't know how that's happening. And because of that insecurity within myself that I'm still working on, I try to give myself a lot of grace and set everything I've done down. Because I think in the moments when people share their stories, it doesn't matter what I've done. See, because it could be small. Like it doesn't take a big thing to make a big impact in someone's life. Yeah. Set it down and listen. And I think that's something I really had to train myself to do over the years. Mm-hmm. Okay, cool. Like stop getting anxiety about it. What does this yeah. person have to say? And yeah. I'm just going to take Leslie, for example, right? Le- meeting Leslie, I had no idea you were part of BODCON when I met you. Like, I was just happy you were there. And you're like, you know, thanks for helping me get here and like get to the casting. Like, I had no idea you were part of this bigger thing. So you just don't know how you impact someone's life. And then when I get an email from you, I'm like, wait, that was you? Like, I called my mom like, mom, remember the girl I met at Good American Casting? And then now we're here on a podcast. Like, you, I don't think I could uh, handle, handle it because- I know I'm not the only amazing person. I know that for a fact. And it, it's, it's a lot of, re- it's a lot of responsibility to be like, there are so many amazing women who look up to you and who are doing amazing things and you can't control what they're going to go do, but you do have the responsibility with your voice to be honest, be authentic, be inspiring and put your best foot forward that way for wh- whatever reason they watch you, they can do that in their own spheres too, i.e. Hi. Hello. (laughs) 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 I I wanted to touch on something that you said, Stella, um, earlier, being that you started this journey in a time when this space wasn't available, like seven years ago to like in comparison to today, there were no fitness plus size line. So I feel like as much as there's so much work to be done, you are like a trailblazer for this space. And I think it's important for people to know like your story and kind of how you got started in this and what what it looked like then in comparison to now. And do you think there's more change that needs to be made and what you would like to see change? 
Yeah. So I love that because I think I don't see myself as, I mean, thank you for the compliment of trailblazing. I don't think I see myself in that space so much because there were OGs before me. And I'm where I even started what I'm doing because I saw someone post on Instagram. I'm like, what? Plus size fashion. I can do that. So there was someone above me before me. Let me do that. Seven years before me. Wow. Seven, seven. (laughs) Weird. Okay. So seven years before me. who started. So it's, I mean, it's life is cyclical and I just feel like where I was because that group of plus size women then were able to put themselves out there in a time where you want to do what you think you're who you want to be on my internet. That was my thing. So because I knew when I joined the internet, it was very casual. I was, I started the internet January, 2016. I did not start plus size fashion until August of 2017. So it was 20 months of me just being me. And this is why I'm a big advocate on just personal branding and just be yourself because literally like I was just living my life. I was just yeah. doing whatever I wanted to do. I was fountaining things. I was playing with slime. I was doing Kylie <laughs> with kids. Like I was just whatever. And yeah. I try to keep a little bit of that essence because it keeps it fun. And I believe like a lot of that has to do with the vulnerability of me. I'll have my phone like this, right? Five years ago. Okay, guys, we're going to a model casting today. And I remember like my first model casting, I literally have as a video online. And then, okay, like going in my car, like crying about it. Like, oh my gosh, I embarrassed myself. I didn't know you were supposed to bring these kind of panties. And I didn't know you were supposed to walk or line up. Like I remember one of my castings, they had us line up and every girl knew what to do. They're like, okay, you step up, you step back. I had no idea. I was like, I should have watched a YouTube video on how to do a casting. <laughs> I just, um, I feel like that is so important too. Cause now girls, when they're sitting at home, they're like, oh, I want to model on now I know I need to go look up how to do the model line yeah. <laughs> before yeah. I go embarrass myself. Yeah. And I, that's kind of a trope to my career too, is like, am I embarrassed, man? But I don't mind it because I feel like that's just how you grow. And like, if I didn't embarrass myself and put that online, who knows who would have walked into a casting or even knew how to get a casting. And so much information is just gate kept. And so I think we, um, I think we have, I think we have a long ways to go go because unfortunately I think a lot of the body positivity body acceptance we've had recently was because it was trendy and now that the trends seem to be going away um I feel like we're (laughs) kind of being put on the back burner a little bit so I think a lot of brands who really believed in that message are still standing very firm and I've had a lot of wonderful conversations with brands who are like no 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 like we still value your shape and someone like me I I'm in this interesting space and my followers are really helping me because I always considered myself apple shape, but I've recently lost weight and, you know, I'm becoming more hourglass, but where this is sticky for me, it's like, I put so much emphasis on that. But at the end of the day, it's like, I still hold my weight in my stomach. Cause like you're hourglass now you're typical figure. I'm like, but I still have a stomach. So it's just weird. I feel like we're in this weird space now where it's like nitpicky to be different. Like your apple shape. So you're different. And I even use that myself, even as recent as, you know, the good American cast, like, well, I'm apple shaped doing it for apple shaped women, but it's like, like this specifically to be worthy of making some kind of impact or can we just be ourselves and move forward and say, yeah, okay. You look like that. You look like that, but like the labels of it all. Speaking of our last podcast episode with Leslie and I together, we talked about the the how we put ourselves in these boxes of plus size mid size straight size and then within each one there's okay so we're in plus size but we're apple shape or hourglass shape or you know we're made to feel like we have to fit into a category right and how that can be sure sometimes maybe that category makes you as you said feel seen and makes you feel like you're finding other people who are a part of your community but what about those who don't feel like they fit into that box, you know, that can just as it can be, um, for someone to find a community, it can also make someone feel like they don't have that. I struggle with that a lot. As of 2020, a lot of my followers are not plus size at all. And they make sure to tell me that, oh, I'm a small, but I enjoy watching you. And so I think as I make content, I start thinking about that, like, well, I had to build my own confidence. Well, who am I outside of being apple shape? Who am I outside of being big girl? There are people who look up to you who are they're literally I get those comments all the time like I'm a, like I don't want to I don't want my followers to feel like they have to qualify themselves to be able to watch me yeah because right. that's, that's really like what's been going on in my head that is, is that good revolution I've been thinking a lot lately about what you just said and how 
we are here to build people's, help people find their confidence, right? And define what confidence looks like for them. And that confidence doesn't have to mean fitting into that category. As you said, it can be someone super small watching you plus size and be so empowered and inspired by you. And it might not have anything to do with, with your body. Maybe it does. Maybe it does. Maybe for that fellow plus size girl, it gives her the motivation and the inspiration to be like, yes, you know what? If Stella can go out there and model and she can wear this, I I can put this on today too. I can feel better about my body in this, but maybe someone who doesn't look at all like you, they're simply like, wow, that woman has confidence. And that's what I want. I simply want to feel confident in me. You know, I got to keep it so real right now. Tell tell me, please. As much as I value that, I understand personally the struggles of being a 375 pound girl and saying, can I exist happily in my body? And so, yes, I, I, as a creator, this is why I still, um, even as I've lost weight, respect my followers who are bigger. It's like, I, I've been in your shoes. I'm still a big girl now. I think Mm -hmm. this is a whole nother conversation about how weight loss has changed, how I'm seen, but yeah. I know firsthand what it's be what it's like to be an apple shaped 375 pound woman saying, am I good enough? So mm-hmm. as much as I understand that, yes, my small followers, my medium followers, my mid-sized followers may need my confidence. I know that the people that look like us, the community's this small and yeah. the voices are this big, but the community's this small. Yeah. And I don't care if one day I'm like completely not Apple ship, whatever. I know the importance of saying, I still have a voice for you because I didn't feel like, even when I discovered plus fashion, it was the beginning of the fashion over air, flat stomachs, big butts, big boobs, and the clothes were five times too small. So it wasn't even like girls like me. I, I will say this. I think I was one of the first girls to be like, I'm squeezing in this. And I still get hate for that to this day. But it made me feel, I didn't even know, like it made me feel so beautiful. It made me feel like I had this, my first fashion of a picture ever was this white bodycon dress. I discovered bodycon dresses and I was like, this is it. And I remember I went in my street and I did a photo shoot and I'm like this, I had like my little clip in extensions in and I was like, I didn't even know one. There were somewhere I could wear clothes like this. I didn't even know, like it was just this new world. But I was, I was so happy within my own body that this is how like this is why I think there's a disconnect when people do tell me like oh you give me confidence I always tell people it took me two years of followers to say that before I really got it because I was like I'm just discovering life but to give someone else the opportunity to be like hey I'm gonna go discover what life means to me yeah that is always 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 going to hold a special place in my heart respecting that you you have such a big part of your heart for that community, the bigger body community. I think that there's more to say in the fact that there's more to you than your body. Because when you go to your YouTube channel, like I'm one of those people who watched your videos, you have talked more about just regular topics. Like you were so open about, you know, sexuality, sexual positions, fashion, everything. And what bothers me about what people say or what people have said is that they are looking at you because you're an Apple Shade creator. They're not looking at you as Stella. That's what bothers me. Because yes, you are, you know, you are a plus size Apple Shade model, but you also have more to you than that. And I just think it's important. That's why I'm so excited, just in case you, in case you guys missed it. Stella's gonna be at the Botacon this year, 2023, which is super exciting. But that's why I think it's super important to have conversations about who you are but that you're also more than just an apple shape. Like when you lose, even if you're size two and that's just what your body does, there's more to you than that. And of course you want to advocate for the people who don't have a voice, but we should be looking at like each individual as an individual, not, oh, you're like, we had me and um, me, we had this conversation on the last podcast. Oh, you're plus size, but you're a skinny plus size. Oh, you're plus size, but you're a light skin plus size. Oh, you're plus size, but you're a mid size plus. So all that, Instead of looking at the person and being like, oh, I'm on TikTok. Oh, I like her vibe. Follow. Now, oh, she has my body follow. Like, I think we TikTok, though, that's like where it's headed. Like, I feel the, I feel like I've been on the right side of TikTok. And a lot of girls who have different shaped bodies, I feel like definitely those are a lot of, like, the conversations in the comments aren't even like, oh, you look good, like, confident. It's like, 
really just about what they're talking about. And that is definitely a shift I've seen. So I'm excited. I think give it a couple more years and I think so. But I think for myself as a creator, I used to scream what I would do. And I have this problem. Like I used to feel like I just needed to be heard. And Mm -hmm. I've realized just if you have integrity in your work and what you do in your messages and your videos, all the topics, it will show for itself, period. Mm -hmm. And I'm just a firm believer in like, the dream, right, is to be like, okay, she's a creator. She's not just the fat creator, but I know myself and I know my, I know what I do. I know what I post. And it's like, you'll learn soon enough because a million people have learned. Mm -hmm. You'll learn too. Just stick around a while. And I think that that's what keeps it fun. And that gives me balance. I don't get burnt out. I see it really burnt out in just fashion. When I was just like, lay it down, be yourself. I honestly, like with the sex series, with hygiene series, I didn't even know that was actually really helpful for people. I was just like, hey, like it started, those kind of videos just started like, hey, look what I learned. And then people were like, oh, like, and again, it's just, it takes my mind out of being like, I can only help the bigger girls. Took Mm -hmm. my mind out of that to be like, no, you are allowed to help other communities too. You, it's okay. (laughs) It's all right. (laughs) Yeah. First of all, I love that you were so honest and real in that answer. Thank you so much. I, you're like, can I be real? I'm like, yes, please, please be real. Like that's, that's exactly. Ask those questions nowadays. Yeah. (laughs) I love, uh, I love that we can be a space that is real. Like Leslie said, we're getting ready to have BODCON 2023 happening March 5th. Tickets are on sale now. Our early bird tickets are on sale. (laughs) Stella will be there chatting alongside so many other incredible people in the um, confidence boosting body confidence space. So if you haven't already grabbed your tickets, please be sure to do so. You can find them at thebodcon.com. Stella, you said to us earlier that it took you two years to really discover confidence for you, right? I want to talk about those two years, discovering that confidence, defining what confidence was for you. I want to know maybe any tips you have or um, resources you look to, to defining that confidence. And then also what confidence really does mean to you? It's a, it's a question I ask everyone who comes on the podcast, but I just feel like because you said about, it took me two years to find it. Like that's so true to so many people's journey because a confidence journey is, it's tough. It's up and down. Mm -hmm. So I I want to talk about those two years. All right. Those two years. So I'm going to start with what confidence means to me, because I really just locked this in through the resources. (laughs) <laughs> literally I have discovered that for myself confidence is so parallel to self-love the more I can limitlessly love myself I'm gonna just shout out my therapist hey Amber girl real quick so she taught me about this critic in our head and the cheerleader she's like a lot of times we listen to our critic and we don't listen to our cheerleader mm-hmm. and when she told me that I was like because then I'll just be thinking about something like is that my cheerleader no and this aligned with my value of self-love and I know so let's take it back to those two years it took me two years to realize I the impact other people had in my confidence yes so the confidence of I can give other people confidence I'm I'm capable of doing that my confidence came from rejection Mm -hmm. being very clear high school had no friends college wasn't Mm -hmm. working out for me then I moved to LA where everyone is just fit green juices and if you want to do anything here lose weight literally told that to my face. So I discovered this self-reliancy that I feel like maybe now I have to work on that I can depend on other people and trust other people. But what that did is that put me in my own world. And then also I'm on the internet now. So now I'm in my own bubble physically, but then I have all these people online, like, Hey, I'm going through this too. And what that did is it made me believe in myself. And I'm like, I always say now, like I built a table so you don't have to, like you can see, you know how people say that all the time, like come see yes. right? right. I literally have videos where I'm like rejected, rejected, rejected. And it's just out there. And I think at some point that became my power to keep going. That became my power of like, okay, something has to give, something has to change. I started in acting and it was lose weight. It was, it was literally really just about lose weight. It was lose weight. Like you're, you have a really pretty face. Um, but you need to lose a few pounds. And at this point I was probably like 340. So like Hollywood was not having it. This was like 2017, the Hollywood was mm-hmm. 2016, but they were not having it. 
And just that constant rejection, it's, you really have to sit with yourself and be honest, be like, what do you want to do? People are going to keep telling you no. And I found my silver lining on the internet because no one could tell me no. You may not agree with how I view myself and you may not agree with how I live my life, but you can't stop me. In Mm -hmm. acting, you cannot get a role. In modeling, you could not book the job. On the internet, who's going to stop you? And a lot of my confidence came from realizing like I got me, like I got my own back. And these Mm. people may not agree or see that yet, but they will and they did. So that's so true. When you have trust in yourself, there is nothing like it. Like having the trust and belief in you is everything and gets you so much further along. And then you know. even when that gets hard though, like because I was building, because I was just doing this all online, I was getting supporters at the same time. So that helps. So the days I didn't feel that trust, I had to remember like, they're like, girl, what? And like, this is why I stress community all the time. It's like, they bounce you back. Right. Truly, truly. I was going to say, I feel like speaking of the internet, I want you to be able to like end this chapter out of what's been happening these last couple of weeks with this whole Jordan Woods thing, just so we can get it out there. Let's close the chapter of it and get the full, like, your true side of it. Because from what I saw, in my opinion, was someone reviewing a clothing brand like you've always have and saying your true opinion. And that's what your opinion was. That That's what I saw. So I feel like there's a couple things that we can, like, really just get rid of, like the rumors. We can discuss, like, okay there's no relationship with you and good American from uh, that you've ever even announced or in general. Um, second, the beef or whatever between you and another person, like, first of all, uh, obviously we're black women. So there's a lot of like, Oh, you have to support other black women. Cause Jordan woman was, is a black woman. Like, why would you, but maybe it was just the, it's the brand, not really her, in which I think that people took that out of context. And three, just what your side was on that situation. Because like I said, from someone who's like emotionally stable, I'm not very, like, I don't believe the hype when it comes to anybody or anything. So I'm always seeing things for what they truly are, not making narratives. I would love for you to just address it and then be like, yo, this is the end of that because this is the truth. Because I kind of feel like I know the truth in my mind, but I want you to be able to Okay, so I would love to hear after what I say to just see if it matched or if you really genuinely had a different opinion. And it's ironic because I posted a story this morning because I finally got my refund accepted for the dresses after a couple attempts. And then I literally captioned, I was like, this is all done. Let's move on. So yeah, this is happening the same day. Great. Exciting. Um, (laughs) I don't go out the same day. It's still happening the same day. And that's enough for me. Um, Yeah. So with the dresses. Can I interrupt really quick? I do... Can, when you say what you say, Stella, will you give just a uh, context to what happened for maybe someone who's listening that has no idea about this, right? Because like Leslie and I know, I think a lot of people listening will know, but for someone who maybe they listen to Bod Pod, but they've somehow lived under a rock and never heard of you, let's give them some context of, of what happened. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I review clothes for a living. And one thing about that self-confidence that I've learned is that I don't need to wait for brands to do deals with me. I can make my own table again. So I've been really, especially 2023, I was like, let's just order from all these stores either I want to work with or just like, or just want to review. So this year I've done that. And I saw Jordan Woods last Monday, or I saw Jordan Woods in January, 2023 online post that she had Woods by Jordan, her new collection come out. And I went and followed the brand. I was following Jordan at the time. It's, this is not personal, even though that already sounded personal, but um, I was following Jordan. I was following the brand. I was excited. You could literally go back on old posts. You could see me be like, I'm so excited. It was no ill intent. Again, I do not have any relationship with the Kardashians. People are like, you're paid by Chris. I'm not um, good American. I'm not a model. I just auditioned. So that narrative is wild to me, but regardless, um, I even chose, you know, and still following Jordan. I do follow Chloe. I do follow Good American. I was like, oh, you're going to follow Jordan. Like, you do not think that's going to ruin your chances. I literally didn't care because I I stand behind Jordan. Like, I really want to see her succeed. So I saw the Woods by Jordan collection and I followed the brand. So then on launch day, I saw we're live. And I was like, yes, it was like 45 minutes within the launch. And I go and I order my two, or I order two different orders, but I had three pieces total. And I was like, okay, it's coming. So I immediately start 
recording on TikTok. And this is a lesson for everyone. So I post a lot of TikToks. The best piece of advice I received in December from a fellow TikToker was post to TikTok now like it's your Instagram stories. It keeps it personal. It keeps it authentic. It keeps it on like in real time. It's fun. I learned from this, which I'll explain later, that it kind of backfired um, posting that much about a specific topic. But it's something I still want to do moving forward. But we'll talk about it later. So anyway, so I start posting immediately. I'm like, ah, like I ordered this dress. And my favorite thing about TikTok is my community because they have such an easy way to reply. So if you want to reply with a video, you just pick a comment and click video, you reply. So one video is replied to another video, which replied to another video, and now you're in a rabbit hole. And so the first video was, okay, I ordered my stuff, and here was my shopping experience. I want people to know um, what to expect from their shopping experience, what to go into it to. Like, for instance, with the Woods by Jordan collection, there was no pay in for option, and three dresses cost me almost $400. So that's something I feel like my followers would want to know if they're wanting to support too. Um, and just like little details. So it could come off nitpicky, but it's not really critique for the brand. Nothing I do is ever for a brand, period. Everything I do is for my followers and the people who are going to be spending their money. So I don't believe, and even to this day, I do not believe my job is to help a brand succeed or fail or anything. That's not my MO. That's not what I'm here for. I'm here to cater to the people who watch me because they like to buy things. They like to see things. They want to know if they should spend their money or if they could skip it. That's it. So I'm a little critical in this process with the Woods by Jordan collection. Again, not to the point of helping the brand do better. I did say, I was like, you know, I would like to see the pay and for option become better, but that wasn't the point. The point was like, hey, so y'all know if you're about to buy this dress and maybe you just want to buy one, post or whatever. Okay. Shipping time was great. I think the next day I got a shipping notification. I made another video. I was like, ship, it's shipped. We're ready to go. Like it's getting good. So I ordered this Monday. It came Wednesday. So excited. I literally had a Walmart haul planned. I stopped the whole thing. I run to my PO box and I was like, the packages, I need them. I was like, I know they're not even in the system yet. I need them. I was so excited. So I come home and I start unboxing the packages. I always, always, always unbox my packages on TikTok, even though I post them full hauls on YouTube and full hauls on TikTok. Always do unboxings on TikTok. It's live reactions. It's first impressions. I hate when first impressions are not there on your rack. That's not a first impression. <laughs> That's a yeah. second or third impression. <laughs> but first impressions for me are also not detailed. So they're very much just like first look, first glance, first impression. And I did that video and you could go back and watch it. It's still on my TikTok. Like the excitement starts to dwindle a little bit. It's like, okay. And I had this moment after I filmed it, I post it. I also don't draft videos. I do not believe in that one. I feel like they don't do well algorithm wise but two I just feel like I'm already off of it I'm over it post the video and I'm sitting there in my living room like Stella I'm like ready to go put this dress on I don't even know I had the one with the face on I even know it was a black dress with a face on it I was like okay I'm gonna go put this on and I was like wait a minute it hit me how much I had paid for these dresses Mm -hmm. and I'm used to reviewing high-end pieces I'm used to reviewing mid pieces and very low end pieces to the point where I'm starting a tier thing now. So when I do reviews, people will know this is a tier one, two or three just for this purpose. And I was like, girl, this is not worth $123 of a dress. And I had this moment where I just sat there before. And I think this is where a lot of my emotions started to come in because the videos after this are very emotional and they were emotional one, because I was like, did I just get scammed out of $400? That's what it felt like. Not saying I did. It's just what I felt like. Um, I also know through my various reviews, I can get similar pieces for way, way, way less. We're talking $20 a piece. Mm -hmm. Um, And I just, I didn't know where to go because I love Jordan Woods. And I was like, if you say anything, you have to know that your chances of working with Woods by Jordan are done. I think when Woods by Jordan first launched on Instagram, they're like, guess what we are? And everyone's like, you're an agency. I was like, yo, if Jordan Woods dropped an agency right now, like, I am joining. That's amazing. And so now that we know it's closed, I'm like, you know, you're literally never going to be able to like work with the brand. Right. And it was just this moment where I was like, it doesn't matter. Like what's for me, what's for me again, back to what we talked about earlier in the podcast. Like if it's a no from something, there's something else available, period. Mm -hmm. Um, And then I started getting emotional because I was like, oh my gosh, if I were to tell my followers to buy this right now, 
I don't know how I would sleep at night. It's never been me to do something like that in a review. My reviews are honest, but I believe this review was just harsher because if, like I said in the video too, it felt like a celebrity cash grab, which we've experienced with Kylie Swim. Um, mm -hmm. I never purchased Kylie Swim personally, but just even the reviews on that where everyone's like, this is so inexpensive compared to her sister's brands who seem, you know, more luxury and quality. And it felt like that same energy. Like, why are we going through this? And the Michaela Nagara situation happened last week. And if you're not familiar with that, it's just, it, it was a mascara ad this makeup reviewer did. And she ended up putting falsies on at the end of it. So it's like this trust that people have, like people are so sick of dishonesty. And luckily for me, I've always been very candid in my opinion and honest in my opinion. And I'm going to be careful not to say it's truth because opinions are different for everyone. Um, but I stand by what I say. And it's this moment of like, are you going to fold right now because of who Jordan Woods is? Yeah. Sorry. That's okay. Because like as a model, that's really, really tough because it's not just Jordan Woods, right? It's her friends. It's her influence, especially in the black community. It's her connections. Her mom's in PR. It's her connections with PR. And it's like truth versus my own gain. And it's this like very clear path of like, I'm so glad you got here in your career. Which way are you going to go? And like choosing truth for me was not hard. I would like to be clear about that. It wasn't hard, but it was very disappointing. And I'll be honest about that. It was like, all right, <laughs> like this is what it's going to be. And I think that's where a lot of my emotion came from too, was like knowing what that was going to cost to me. Mm -hmm. Um, it's Jordan Woods. Like, let's be real. Like knowing what that's going to cost me with my partnerships. I didn't necessarily, let me, we'll talk about that later. I didn't necessarily know what that was going to mean for my partnerships. If anything, I was like, I am protecting the people who brought me here. And that's always, always, always my first intention when filming. So I make this video and I go in on the brand. I had to, it was my honesty. I went in on how I felt the quality was for the price point. That's the main focus, which I feel like a lot of people also miss. It was literally what you are paying for what you are getting. Um, I knew it was mesh. I knew it was see-through. I could see it on the models. Um, I didn't expect the quality. And the dresses are beautiful too. It's not about them not being beautiful, but it's just not worth $123, period. Yeah. So I make that video. And then I do what I do for TikTok. I make follow-up videos. I make a lot of videos every day. You can scroll through my feed. Um, it's what I do. So I'm replying to comments. Like people are like, well, how does this look? Or how does that look? Or, you know, if I notice something, I just make another video. Again, I treat it like my Instagram stories. And then I went to bed. And then I woke up and people are like, yo, thanks for taking my coin. I'm like, okay, I did my job. I'm feeling proud. I'm like, okay, cool. Then Jordan responds in a video. Then I get emotional and I respond in a video. And then she responds back and it becomes this narrative of mean girl versus nice girl. And mm -hmm. it turns into a beast after this. It's, yeah. um, I mentioned about the mesh not being high quality, which I still stand by. I don't think it is. And now it's like the internet trolls are like, where's the high mesh quality, Stella? Like, can you show us high quality mesh? At the end of Jordan's responses, like she was very sweet. At the end of her responses, she was mentioned, you know, let me know a mesh and we can work on this together. My first thought is I don't work for you. I work for my followers who invest their trust in me. You have multiple resources. This is not your first clothing brand. I think a lot of people in the comments missed that too. They're like, oh, it's her first. I'm like, she had first place. She had a whole other brand of athletic wear. This is not her first rodeo. Like you have resources, you have experience, and this is, you're not, I'm not on your payroll to fix your brand. Um, but on another note, because of her responses, she said out her own mouth that I'm the reason she got a lot of sales. Like 45 minutes within her launch, I'm her 46th and 48th sale. So that also like shows I was right in putting my loyalty with the people who don't have the resources to just be like, I'm gonna just drop $400 on three dresses. It's like, no, nah. like I, when she said that out her own mouth, I was like, I did what was right. Yeah. So that went south very fast and it was a very, very tough weekend um, mentally. And just questioning myself, did I make the right decision? Did I stand? Should I have just lie? Not maybe lie, but there's definitely a way to fluff the truth. I could have been nicer. Mm -hmm. um, but the, back to that point. So Jordan's point too was like, there's a way to criticize people and do it respectfully. And I do agree with that, but I don't agree with that on the sense of professionally. I agree with that on a personal level. 
I was so invested as a fan in your clothing company and I felt like I wasted $400 on this product. And now at this point, when these videos are coming out, I've already put in my request the day before and I still heard nothing, but you're telling all of your followers that your PR team's working around the clock trying to fix problems, but I emailed you yesterday. So I'm already as a fan, very emotional. And I think this review would have been very different if it was like, we're going to just take Sofia Vergara, for example. She has a little line at Walmart and I did a review on it. I'm not emotionally invested in her as a celebrity. So for me to review her line, okay, these jeans don't look good on me next. But for Jordan, it just felt personal because I felt as a fan, I didn't feel take off the creator. I felt as a fan, my experience. Yeah. And um, yeah, then afterward, I think as the dust started to settle a little bit, my followers, my OGs came out. And then a lot of new people who found me just through the articles that came out, they're like, thank you for being honest. Like we are sick of people wanting the PR lists and wanting to just stay on these celebrities' good sides just to be in the mix. I'm someone who's been around a lot of celebrities and I realize those relationships are important if you're clout chasing and trying to get ahead. But if you're mm -hmm. trying to actually make a difference, you're focusing on the wrong things, which is why I don't care to go against the grain. Yeah. Um, and again, every day is, you know, you know, new cycles happen as life goes on. I see I see more of that truth come out, but I feel like the tones now are, you know, she is a black business. So you should never want to see her. You should want to support regardless. When I was reviewing that, I didn't see her as I saw like her as another black woman. I want to support your business. But that protection level. Like we need to protect our black people. Are like you should have just DM'd her. Do you think she would have cared if I DM'd her? Yeah. Like my, again, that's me catering to her. I'm not catering to her. I'm catering to the people who are going to be spending money on her. Yeah. Um. And then the other aspect of you could have been nicer, which I do agree with. I do agree. I had a lot of emotion, but I know that. Like moving forward, just like my reviews, just being more respectful. But those are like the conversations. I don't know, Leslie, if you can add more to that. But well, um, I was just gonna say, well. My whole thank you for sharing your side of that because we only people only get the snips and they don't know the whole mindset the before the after the during thought process and some you know you took you held yourself accountable for the things that you felt like you needed to hold yourself accountable to but then you also like were still like I, yeah yeah I you you kept it real for what you thought you were doing was correct and I just feel like. And I don't want to make this like a big, like weird drama issue, but I just feel like there are so many creators that come on here and tell their side and their opinion. And I don't think that I've seen someone be so, I didn't, I never, I didn't think that people would come so hard on you about you being honest about what you felt about a product. And there's creators, different skin tones. If you want to talk about that or not, I don't know how deep we want to get into that. But I will say that as a Black woman, I understand the the difficulties that we have to go through in social media anyway. And so it's so great. note on this. My note on this is I was the only, I was calling my mom. I was like, mom, I'm going to have the first scoop on Woods by Jordan. I was the only creator talking about this collection. When you look uh, like this time or so Monday, when the launch day through Wednesday, when I got the clothes, if you search Woods by Jordan, it was all my videos, which he mm -hmm. made me have more hype to make more and not in the sense of, oh, I'm not going to, I had no idea. I it didn't even register. This could go bad. But I was like, mom, like I'm the only creator talking about this brand. Like I cannot wait. Like it's going to bring so many sales. Like it's going to be so, so much fun. And then we see the bad part of that when the expectation is lowered, but I mean, yes, there are a lot of creators of different, but at that time, I was the only creator publicly talking about this collection. That wasn't like a news page of some kind. Like Leslie said, thank you for being so vulnerable in sharing that. You said about being emotional when you were creating the content. And obviously I can feel the emotion like through the screen and you can hear it um, for anyone who's watching us on YouTube, like you can see it in your face. And I think- um, as someone who creates in, on a different level, in a different way, right? I know exactly what you mean in that it, you do feel a sense of responsibility to the people that you're creating for. Like you've created a relationship, you've created trust. And isn't that a relate, isn't that what we all want in a relationship is that trust and that honesty and that realness. And something that you said from the moment that we hopped on here is it, I think multiple times in this podcast, you said, can I be real for a second? And to me from consuming your content and chatting with you here, 
you are clearly someone who is real to your core, right? Like, and that realness and that authenticity is what has gotten you to where you are being yourself, not trying to be someone else. Like you said, you could have tried to fit into molds seven years ago when you were living in LA and you, you're, you're not doing that. You've stayed Stella, right? And you've created what, what you've created by being Stella. And that's exactly what you were doing in this. And so I, I, thank you one for being real and honest and like speaking that truth for being vulnerable. And I think to what you said, um, there are so many people who choose the, the path of being a little bit lighter with their words or fluffier is, is how you said it. And, and that's fine for them if, if that's how they choose to be, but you know, for you and your community and what you've built, you will always have that realness and that honesty. And to me, that sticks a lot longer than any, like, any moment like you just experienced last week. And I just want to note on that too, like, this podcast has made me realize, like, my new insecurity of, like, I do keep saying, can I keep it real? Because now I have, like, this new insecurity of, like, is that going to be okay? Yeah. Yeah. My value is truth. My value is my honest opinion. And now I feel like I have to build confidence now to say like like remember who you are I publicly said this in a TikTok after the whole situation I'm like I had to remember remember who you are and it's okay to be who you are it may not always look like it's a safe space to be who you are but that's Mm -hmm. no one's responsibility your responsibility is to yourself yeah so I just want to make that note no I love you're so right like it you would be you would be doing yourself and your community a disservice by choosing to no longer keep it real because of what some random people on the internet said about you, right? right? Like what a disservice you would be doing to to this community you've built, this beautiful brand you've built to yourself by simply doing that to appease other people. There's no, uh, I'm sorry, like I don't find that there's any success in in appeasing other people if you're not happy with you and what happiness can you find if you can't keep it real yourself I love though that you said um you know I found that that's a new insecurity and a place to be able to build confidence from because doesn't that bring it full circle with where we started right of being like okay before I've been in a place where I realized I wasn't confident and I needed to build it and now here again I mean it's a total different total different situation but you're like okay I can build that confidence in me and my being real again. And I just, I applaud you for, for that and, and how you've handled it. And I'm going to add on to that for everybody who's watching this. And I I say that every, I'm like, for everybody who's watching this, because it's very important. The internet is the internet, right? What the perception is just the perception. And there's, what society thinks and what's happening in society and what's real and what's not, it varies. So we have to sometimes give people grace because I immediately saw this, like every situation, even when you became a meme back in like 2020 and you were just living your life, you were just walking on the street and said, Hey, can take a picture. And then you became viral because you were just living. When do we get to a place where (laughs) we start to say to ourselves, okay, this person's in a different body than me, but that doesn't mean anything. They are just who they are. Just to just bring it into the body confidence conversation because people look at can look at me and then look at Rachel, can look at Stella and just assume different fitness levels. People can assume different health levels. People can assume that I work out and then, or she doesn't work out or Rachel works out and I don't or whatever. Same thing when it comes to the internet. Someone was reviewing a brand told her truth and you're gonna you're what what are we doing here right let's really look at both sides let's not create narratives rumors because one I know people love that toxic YouTube drama right oh yeah but understand that we're some of the drama is created because we know people like drama so remember when you're watching these things and people are saying rumors be like oh i'm enjoying it i'm loving the the fakeness of it but also remember this can be fake the comments and the reviews like there were so many stitches to you stella this last week and it was some of it was just fake rumors we just nipped it in the bud you don't have a relationship with an american you don't have a relationship with chloe kardashian but everybody just assumed 
that that's what why you made the review or whatever the case is. So is I so like. Well, go back, going back to your point earlier, like people just look at us and like don't know the story. And that's why I, yeah. in this situation, I just have to do what I do best, which I feel like maybe I should hire a publicist, but I just feel like people will see your character. And yeah. like this, you know, I had a lot of my followers, so I'm not just going to say it's trolls. Like a lot of my followers, like, this is not your character lately. Like, who are you? And it's like, I'm so dumb people pleasing, like even to the detriment of some of my followers, like, I love you guys, but Here's some more topics I've been scared to even share with you because I don't want to get on your toes, but it's like, we just need freedom to speak our minds. And that may ruffle a couple feathers. I had to make a comment to that today. So one of my followers who's been around and I've seen her around, I was like, look, if you can't handle this, I'm figuring it out. If you can't handle me while I'm figuring it out, no love loss. And thank you for your support this far. Mm -hmm. But if you got to go, you got to go. And it's Mm -hmm. like, I've been in so many cycles on the internet of people leaving, people coming back, people like, I haven't watched you in years. I'm so happy to watch you again. Like the first time I heard that, my ego was hurt. Like, what do you mean you stopped watching me a couple of years ago? Like, girl, what? <laughs> like, I, I was like, I'm it's so life. Like, they're creators. I'll come back two years later and be like, oh yeah, you still like watch all your videos. So it's cyclical, it's life. And I think the rumors, like that's my first time with so many rumors being developed around my name. I've never had that before. Mm-hmm. Um, and every piece of dirt came out from under the rug and I was like well ironically that's what I was doing in my personal life and I've talked about everything I've done that's like sketch or weird or you know trying to be clouchy whatever I've talked about it all so for me it was just like yeah I did that and I talked about it and that was years ago and whatever yeah so to what to what you said and what Leslie said I mean, if, if we want to talk about it more, we absolutely can. You know that this is, as I said to you at the beginning, this is a safe, comfortable space to do so. But I also want to grant you the opportunity to like close, close the chapter, as we said when we first started talking about this and be able to, you know, m- m- find that confidence now, right? Pa- like after this, like rediscover that confidence. So just like closing the chapter for me is just very publicly saying like, I am sorry to Jordan Woods for the harshness and the emotional part of my review and understanding that I do not want to see a young black woman fail. I do not want to see a black business fail. This was not personal. Um, And that's like another narrative that's been like a rumor. It's not personal. My, my, allegiances lie with my followers and the people like my community there when I make videos reviews they usually stay within my community and just so randomly do they pop out to the world or go viral I never know when that's going to happen I never Mm -hmm. you can't plan for that to happen Mm -hmm. um and I've already publicly stated I hope in a year I will repurchase from the brand and you know do a follow-up review just to see how it's developed or whatever is going on in the brand then again I don't know if it's just going to be mesh dresses forever. It may be bodysuits and jeans. Who knows? Like, I don't dislike Jordan Woods. I don't dislike the brand. I just feel a little used right now. And I need to just sit with that. And it's not the end of the world. I've already done like so many different reviews since then. I literally focus on something for a moment and move on. And in a year, I'll recircle back and see, okay, like update. Let's see where the brand is now. And that's it. Like, it's not that deep. I think that's the other thing too. Right. Like people make this such a big deal and it's literally not that deep. They're like, well, you made six to seven videos. I'm like, look at my page. It's what I do. Like, so it's just, um, and I know I said, I was going to mention that earlier. I do make six to seven videos a day. I explained why I did it, but it's just like, it can look bad. So this is a warning for anyone who wants to treat their page and got that advice with, from the same TikToker like me, treat it like your Instagram stories. You can now see what happens when things don't always go right. It could look like being a hate, but I wasn't being a hate. Well, we can nip it in the butt. You guys heard it here first. Look, we're, we're closing the chapter on that because I already understood. I already was like, people are making this a bigger deal than what it is. And I think I say this to Rachel every time we're on a phone call about any topic. I'm like, I feel like we're making this bigger than what it is, <laughs> right? So, I'll tell you the funniest comment. The, one of the comments on Jordan's video is like, this is just light skin beef. I was like, oh my gosh. I was laughing at that for so hard. Like people were like, it is not that deep. <laughs> it's not deep. So I'm so happy that we were able to 
I'm so happy that we were able to like ch like end this because I just really wanted. I knew it was gonna die down at some point, but I really wanted to get your full story. And let's talk about like the more exciting things, the good things. You are a huge part and a huge impactful part of uh, the Plus Eyes community. The things that are coming in the future. At, and it's so funny. I didn't know that you were the first Fashion Nova size 24 model. I didn't know that. You know. So there's a lot of things that you have done that is amazing so let's talk about what's to come i feel like that's a really good way to know like do you have anything new you want to share with us like any i know that you have your course or you have your your community of people who are creators like what do you have going on and and what are you excited the most about the con okay so i'm really really excited um i have curve hall which is like my little baby it keeps reinventing itself but right now i'm in a really happy place with it i'm just sharing up and coming creators in the curve space to just give them a platform and they love it. I love it. It's um, it's where I'm, it's a very happy medium for me. So Curve Hall is like my baby right now. In modeling space, I firmly believe content creators are replacing models, actors, all these things. And I've seen that just from like my behind the scenes work I've done in Hollywood. Like I saw the emergence, but we are here. If you want to be a model, an actor, whatever, the internet's where it is. And I've been telling people this since before I started the internet, but I am so happy and so blessed that because of my integrity and my honesty, like I've been blessed 10 times what I thought I could be. And so just a lot of really, really good partnerships coming up this year and, you know, more content. I feel like I'm in a really good space right now to just share because at this point I have no ego about, well, I'm not getting paid to post it. Like right now I'm just so in love with what I'm doing that the money is just a benefit. The, 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 the being able to do this full time is just the addition and like Bob kind of excited me. I don't care if you're like, you just gotta like just show up and, um, we got to launch like fine. Like I'm in, like, I'm just so in, I just feel like it's a time where I just want people to get out of their heads. I really want people to just stop thinking about this. And I think that even goes to my point of post six to seven times a day on TikTok. Stop thinking and just start doing and you don't understand. I'm actually doing a series this year on like where I was January 1st to where I am at the end of the year. And I was like, I don't know if I'm going to post it every month or not. I'd have to probably post it today. Today's February 1st when we're recording. But um, I'm like doing this thing like you can watch your growth, just move. And I realize like I do struggle with anxiety. And it's like, I'm in my head. Whenever I step out of my head now, because, you know, with tools, it's a little easier. It's like, just run. So I'm excited to share that at VODCON because I'm excited to just be like, any chance. I'm really, I really like the panel atmosphere because people just ask you questions. I'm really good at direct <laughs> questions. Um, I can scream confidence things to you all day. But when you ask me a direct question, I will give you a no gate kept answer, which is, yes. I feel really hard to get out of people. Love. But why? Like, I used to... I feel I used to give a lot of videos of just the free advice. And I've realized over the years, if they want it, they will take it. And a lot of people do take it. And they're come back and be like, oh my gosh, I started this and look where my channel is now. I got my first PR collab. I got my first paid collab. And then some people don't. And they're like, well, could you help us more? And it's just people are in different spaces and need different things. Mm -hmm. um, and I feel like Bacom for me is really exciting because you're getting a lot of people in a space that come from different levels of where they are and what they want to do. Maybe they don't even want to be on the internet, but you know, they do work a nine to five and they just want to be more confident at work, like, or in their meetings and you just never know. So I like it. It's exciting for me. Again, it's not my responsibility to know how my people are going to use the information, but just giving the right information with a solid voice for me is the most important and being able to share that. Yes. Um, we can't, we cannot wait for you to be a part of Bod Constella. I know this conversation has been so powerful, so confidence boosting, so real, as you said. And I know that we're going to bring all of that realness and all that confidence into Bodcon 2023. Um, as we said earlier, you can get your tickets now um, happening March 5th at thebodcon.com. We do have early bird tickets on sale. And Stella, obviously we referenced all of your online platforms but tell us exactly where we can find you if we want to keep up with you until we get to the BodCon and beyond. Tell us where to find you. You can find me everywhere at the Stella Williams. Awesome. YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, Pinterest. I'm on Facebook. I'm a machine this year. I don't know what's going on, <laughs> but I'm ready. Like a 2023. Yes. Let's We're ready it. to see it. We are I'm ready. So I know I'll be following. We know Leslie will be following. We can't wait to see what you're oh, doing. Yeah. You're always 
always in your corner supporting you. So thank you so much, Stella, for being a part of this podcast. Leslie, thank you so much for being here too, asking great questions. And thank you to everyone who listened. You know where to find us on Instagram at the BodCon. You can also stream our podcasts on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and also watch the visuals on YouTube if you're just streaming. And um, we'll see you next week. Thanks, guys. Bye. Bye. Thanks so much for joining us today on the Bod Pod. We release new episodes every week and we're available on all podcast streaming platforms and now YouTube too. Subscribe to our channels to be the first to know. Want to talk all things body confidence, enter amazing giveaways and hear updates about the BodCon 2023? Find us on Instagram at the BodCon. My name's Rachel K. Grimm and I'll see you next week.